Good evening, everybody. This is Thomas Ott from NeuromarketTrends.com, and welcome to my 14th video tutorial on RapidMiner 5.0. In tonight's video, I want to talk to you a little bit about using RapidMiner, using the web mining and text mining operators to help pull down some text data from a financial website or a group of financial websites to do a word list analysis and find out the similarity between the sites themselves. Uh, this may be handy uh, or you could use this as a starting point to mine some specific websites that you're interested in to get some information to see some word list, word list frequencies for whatever reason. Perhaps you're interested in knowing if people are talking about CSX, uh, um, stock symbol CSX or Apple or some other thing that you may find interesting. But I can't begin without giving two hat tips to one, um, Neil, I'm sorry if I'm going to screw up your last name, Neil McGuinn of Vancouver blog, VancouverData.blogspot.com and the Rapid Eye guys. Um, just to take a step back, Neil put together some really great introductory text mining videos on his website last year, uh, which I actually build upon here in this video. And of course, the Rapid Eye guys for putting together one heck of a web slash text mining training session last year at RCOM 2010. I highly suggest that if you want to get more information about text mining, check out Neil's website. That's vancouverdata.blogspot.com. And of course, the great webinars and training sessions by the Rapid Eye guys over in Germany. They're found at www.rapid-i.com. Okay. Let's begin. This is actually quite simple. We're going to be working in the text mining operator group here as well as the web mining operator group down here. First thing what I want to do is I want to be able to use the web mining tools of RapidMiner to go and visit a select group of financial uh, websites and pull parse data off of that and try to build a word list uh, frequency and then also determine how similar those websites are to each other. What I did was I created a website, I'm sorry, I created a, an Excel spreadsheet right here that has a bunch of links in here. Um, for testing purposes, I was using stock twits, but let's take, you. let's use, um, let's try a different website. Let's try using, oops, sorry about that. Let's use our favorite friend, the Chairman Mao Xin website for some information here. And uh, let's leave IYT, which is the transport one. And CCI, let's change CCI. Oh, let me change that here. Let's change CCI to guess whose website? Yours truly. EuromarketTrends.com. And we're going to also continue to use the CSX symbol here. So here I have one column in a spreadsheet with a, a header row of link and four links. We want to go to these websites, just mine what's on that page, and take it back, build a word frequency um, list. Tells us how many uh, times the words occur in those websites, um, on those pages, and also then later on create a, a data to a similarity measure to see how similar those pages are to each other. Okay, so let's save this. Okay, and we go back to Rapid Miner. And first things first, we are going to use a read Excel operator because we'll, we have a, an Excel operator in here. Okay, and then we're going to import it. Let's connect it here first. So we go to the import wizard over here. Okay, let me go up here, select links. In this case, it's called links. And it's going to load it in now. And now part of the import process, you have to watch. There's a little trick here you have to watch if you're using Excel and trying to load in some links here. Okay, so this looks good. Link. Okay, the top row is the header, which is name. And now we get to this part here. This is the important part you should remember. Rapid Miner assumes that these links, these attributes, are polynomials, and that's wrong. You have to go here and you have to change it to file path. So RapidMiner knows that, aha, this is a file path or a, a web address. And then we're okay, we finish. 
Okay, good, everything loaded in. Let's just run it real quick. See how it looks. Okay, everything looks good. See, here we go, everything loaded in. Maoshin, the IYT at StockTwits, my website, and CSX at StockTwits. Okay. Let's go back here. Now, the next part what we want to do is we want to use, we want to have Rapid Miner take the information in the Excel spreadsheet, those links, those websites, and get those pages. All we're going to do is we're just going to get those top level pages. We're not going to go mine into several levels deep. We're just going to get those web pages right now. So we're going to go to the web mining operators and we're going to use the operator called get pages. Let's drag it over here. Okay. Now, this is all relatively simple to do, but you need to set up some of the parameters. For instance, the link attribute, that's important. You have to put that in here. So you have to use, we're gonna choose link because the attribute where all the website addresses are located are under the link header. If you remember, let's go back to the website here, or back to the Excel spreadsheet, right here. This is the header name, link, and that's the attribute name you're gonna use, okay? So let's just save that and let's just run it. Let's just see what it looks like here. Everything else is good, okay? And I don't believe anything should happen at this point. Uh, I don't remember what the output, okay, there we go. Here's some data view. Here we go, here's the various links, okay? The, dot, the uh, type, in this case, all HTML. The URL, the responses were okay. And it gives us some information here, okay? But this is all it gives us, some basic information. We did not tell RapidMiner to read the links and get the pages and then save them. All we did was tell RapidMiner, read the links, go to those pages, and that's it. All right? Now we want to retrieve the information is what we want to do. We want to take the data that RapidMiner read on those web pages and create documents out of it. I want to take that data, that web data, and create them into documents which we can then text mine later. So in order to accomplish that, we will need to use an operator called data to documents. Okay? And data to documents will essentially do that. It will take an example set, which here, the read Excel, reads the links, the web crawler will get those pages and create an example data set. The data to documents will then read that data set and convert it into documents. So let's run this again and let's take a look at what happens. Give it another couple seconds. I believe it's about six or seven seconds. Four seconds, I was wrong. So here we go. Now it created a bunch, a collection of data documents. And here they are. You can see right now. If you look at this one is the Maoshing website, has a bunch of link archives, um, looks appears it has some other information. He likes to post a lot of his uh, delicious links, but oh, look here, here's some other stuff here. Um, here's his text that he's writing, okay? A bunch of other information here. And let's take a look at Neural Market Trends. I think Neural Market Trends, you should see that uh, I recently posted the new video right here on parameter optimization. Perfect, seems to be working great. Okay, so now we created, we got a list of links, we got the pages, we crawled them, got the data, and now we converted them to documents. But now what? Now, now what do we do? Are we, do we want to, how do we start text mining this information? How do we take this information, tokenize it, let's just say, and use that information to create a word list? And from that word list, create, you know, under, try to understand the websites, why the, how similar are the websites to each other? Okay. In order to do that, we would need to then take the data that was moved to documents and then process those documents. We need to take first step, get the data, convert it to documents, and now start the processing of those documents. And it's right here under the text processing operators, process documents. We just drag it over here and connect it. You can see here, the output is now documents and it goes back into documents. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to click and connect the word list, right? Now, the process document operator is a nested operator as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to use the tokenizer, tokenize web 
uh, tokenized operator. And this essentially cuts the words into pieces. Uh, every sentence is made up of several words and it begins to split the words. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take we're going to take the tokenizer, the mode is non-letters. It's going to use between the letters, it's spaces or whatever, it's going to then separate that. And uh, we're going to try to, let's see, also do, um, let's do uh, transform the cases. We want to do all lowercase. And why don't we also filter stop words? Okay. Okay, good. Now let's go up here. And now this should build a word list if we've done it right. Oh, one thing we need to do. Okay, over here we have to check the parameters on process documents. We have to keep click keep the text. That's the one thing we have to do. Let's run it. And it should probably take another six seconds or so. And let's take a look at our word list here. Look at this. On those four websites, let's click on total occurrences. You can see here, here it picks up some of the, the, the web um, HTML uh, coding. In another video, I will show you on how to take out those HTML um, codes. So you're just only left with the text. But for this video, we'll just ignore it for now. But you can see over here that out of all the information, of all the web pages we crawled, Neural Market Trends shows up 116 times in all the documents. Uh, let's see, Rapid Miner 61, Stock Twitch 74. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's try to find. Let's try to find CSX. CSX. Scroll down. Chairman shows up there, of course. CSX, here we go. CSX shows up 14 times in only one document. That makes sense. Shows up in the stock twits page for CSX. Um, credibility only shows up once in one document. Okay, great. And of course, here's our example set. Data view, right? Same thing that we've seen. Tells us the density right here. Okay, this is great and dandy. So now, what do we do with this? Why, why don't we take a look at taking this data and trying to figure out how similar it is to each other. In order to do that, we need to do a data to similarity operator. And what we would do is we would connect it to the outside example set here. And we would use a parameter called numerical measures and cosine similarity. And let's run this again. Save it. Run it. And see what happens in about six seconds. Now we have a new output. Now we have a list of the first websites compared to the next group. This is the, how similar is the first website to the second website? Well, not very similar. The second website, which was Maoshiing, is very similar to the fourth website. So let's take a look at this. So first website, um, I'm sorry, first website is actually Maoshing, my bad. Let's go look it over here. Let's see how similar Maoshing is to my website, Neural Market Trends, which would be in the third position. So one to the third, 0 0.0019. However, the StockTwits IYT is very similar to StockTwits CSX. I guess it would make sense because they're all on the same website. We can also look at it in graph form. You see here in graph form, if you click on the node labels, there's the first website, Maoshing, and there is the StockTwits IYT. Here I am, number three, and here is the CSX from StockTwits. And you can see here, just by visually looking at it, there's a darker line right here that shows that this relationship is more prominent than these. You click on edge labels, it will actually give you the similarity measure, how similar they are. You see, obviously, Maoshing is not very similar with CSX, probably because he didn't write about it. Uh, however, there is some similarity between my website and his, 0.019. Uh, my website has some similarity between um, the CSX and stock twits. But I have very little similarity, or actually I have some similarity to the IYT. And there you have it. That is 
a beginning basic tutorial on how you can use um, the get page operator to do some web mining of some specific websites that you would like. Um, take that information, create a word frequency list to determine how many times they occur in documents and how often, and then take that information to see how similar those websites are. Thank you very much. This is Thomas Ott from NeuralMarketTrends.com. I look forward to your comments and chatting with you. Have a great day.